Hey, what's going on? I am Richie Moon from True Heel Heat Wrestling. And before we get on for today's Raw review, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe at True Heel Heat Wrestling for the latest and greatest in wrestling news. And Monday Night Raw opened up with a moment of bliss. Did she have a, a was that a dog or a pet in the cage? I know it wasn't live, but animal abuse. Shame on you, Miss Bliss. But anywho, Randy Orton came out there and he said how uh, he lost to AJ Styles next week, but how him and The Fiend have a lot of things in common. But just like he found a weakness in Bray Wyatt referring to their House of Horror matches and him burning down Sister Abigail, that there's got to be a weakness in The Fiend. And then Little Miss Bliss responds, who is manipulating who? And, you know, at first I thought this segment was weak. But upon further examinations, I have to take that back. And I think this is actually a smart wrinkle in the story. Randy Orton found a weakness in the cult leader Bray Wyatt. And it seemed that he's also found a weakness in the fiend Bray Wyatt. Because when the lights came back up, he had Little Miss Bliss in his arms. And for the first time... We've seen, the fiend, we've seen the Fiend show a little bit of vulnerability. He was very much reaching out for Alexa Bliss, and he, was very much, he very much wanted Alexa Bliss back. And when he got her, it was very much of, well, oh, this is mine. I have to take care of her. I have to protect her. And Randy Orton had this shit-eating grin on his face like, ah, I have found a chink in the Fiend's armor. So I think that segment was a hit. And our next matchup on Raw, well, actually, our first matchup on Raw for the night was a Sympathy of Destruction match between Jeff Hardy and Elias. I don't know about you guys, I forgot they were feuding, Survivor Series kind of happened, and this feud just kind of just went away in the wind. But, commentary put it over as their final chapter in their feud. And I gotta say, for their final match, this was honestly their best match. This match had guitars in it, guitar chips, electrocutions, tables, ladders, chairs, oh my. And listen, listen. Jeff Hardy's been doing a lot of crazy stuff throughout his entire career, but this was one of the first times that I was really, really concerned for him. I think this is a match that you should go out of your way to see. Like I said, uh, Elias tried to hit good, tried to hit Jeff Hardy with the guitar. He ended up getting electrocuted. There was guitar chip. It was a lot of shenanigans. If you know me, I like shenanigans in my wrestling match. But the ending sequence, Jeff Hardy puts Elias on the table. He goes to the top of the ring. He does a swanton bomb from outside of, from, 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 from the ring to the outside of the ring. The only issue with that is, is I'm 99.9% .9 sure that Jeff Hardy smacked the back of his head on the steel steps. But he got the one, two, three. He got up on his own strength. He played the tangerine and he rolled off into the sunset. Hey, Jeff Hardy's been doing these things for years. What are we to say? Apparently he's all right. And it's the end of this feud. And has anybody noticed that Elias never wins a feud? I mean, really, just go back to all his feuds. He never wins in the end. He may win a couple of battles, but he never wins a war. <laughs> Next up, we got Ricochet versus Slapjack. I just, Slapjack, I mean, I know that they've been giving these names weeks ago, but are you just purposely trying to bury your superstars? Or do you want the fans to do it for you? Anywho, Ricochet vs. Slapjack, they did a video recap of going over Ricochet's and Retribution's feud over the last couple of weeks and Ricochet refusing and at this point, Retribution's kind of like, you're going to get down or you're going to lay down. They had a good back and forth. Ricochet was basically dominating this match. The Retribution starts to surround the, the, start to surround the ring. Ricochet does a big dive, wipes all of them out and you get a bit of a back and forth and then Dana Brooke kind of pops up. Um, you know, she does a reverse Dana. She kind of snaps up out of nowhere. She snaps Ali for what Reckoning did a couple of weeks ago. Why she just wouldn't go directly after Reckoning, I don't know. Maybe there was something in the story that I missed. And uh, Ricochet is fighting everybody, He's fighting all the members of uh, Retribution off at the ringside. Then he comes in and gets hit with the Slapjack. I have no idea what that name of them, what, what that move of that name is, so I'm just going to call it the Slapjack. Slapjack hit Ricochet with the Slapjack for the one, two, three. And, you know, even though they got the win, I just, I, I honestly feel bad for Retribution. It started out so good for like those first two days. And then just slowly, just, it just got main roster. And then you drag Ricochet into it and just, it's a miss. Th that segment was a miss. Next up, we had Miz TV, and their guest uh, host was Sheamus. And 
And Miz is trying to get to Sheamus' head and saying, hey, man, you gave Drew McIntyre this cool new sword. And he's been on this wave of momentum. But, you know, what did Drew get you? And then, you know, Miz is trying to say, hey, man, why don't you come join forces with us? Come help me cash in this money in the bank. You could be one of the first contenders once I win the WWE title. Sheamus isn't really having none of this. Putting over his friendship with Drew. An argument starts. Miz gets heated, gets all in the Sheamus' face. And then, of course, a brawl breaks out. And Sheamus is getting the upper hand at first. But then the numbers game comes in there. And they start beating Sheamus down with the money in the bank. What might be a, a foreshadow of what actually might happen in the money in the bank match. But, you know, there was no Drew McIntyre. So I like the way they're keeping that plate spinning with all this. And we'll see if they follow up later on. Next up, we have... Lana and Asuka versus Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. And before the match started, there was an interview with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler backstage. And those two, they always have tension running between them because they're an odd couple. You know, the match starts and surprisingly, Lana's getting in there and she's actually wrestling Shayna Baszler. She actually gets a little roll up. Of course, you know, she kicks out, but there's a nice little back and forth. She tags out, Asuka gets in there, runs wild. They both go for a dual baseball slide, and then uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler both catch them in that power palm position and just pendulum of swinging them against the barricades. Lana's back in there. She gets another hot tag to Asuka. Asuka runs wild in there. She gets a tag to Lana, and at the end, Lana ends up falling on Shayna Baszler for the one, two, three, and honestly, Oscar deserves more. I mean, I mean seriously, Oscar deserves. Oscar is, and I'll say this again: Oscar is one of the best wrestlers, men or woman, in your company, and she's doing this. I mean, what? Can we just split this up and have Lana and Nia Jax in, 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 a, in a tables match? And can we just get Shayna Baszler versus Oscar one on one? Because. Oscar deserves more than this. Oscar deserves better. Hashtag Oscar deserves better. Matter of fact, I'm putting that in there right now. Oscar deserves better. This segment was a miss. Hashtag Oscar deserves better. Well, asking you shall receive. So, Drew McIntyre is backstage and Sheamus is approaching him. And they're having a pretty passive aggressive conversation. And Sheamus is like, hey, man, I'll get my ass beat out there. You know, where were you? But, uh, you know, Drew was like, well, you got fire in your belly now. Let's go out there and kick their ass, lads. That's, that's not what he said. He didn't say lads. That was, a, that, was, that was a bad Scottish accent. I actually can do accents because I'm an actor, but that wasn't a good one. So I'm not going to go back to the accents. But you can see that the plates are spinning with Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. And personally, I am here for it. I think that's going to be a really good match. I think that Sheamus is one of the most underrated superstars in all of WWE. This is a formal world heavyweight champion. Just because he hasn't been at that level in years doesn't mean he still can't compete at that level. But yeah, setting up for the main event with Drew McIntyre and Sheamus versus The Miz and John Morrison. This segment, eh, it wasn't hit. It did what it's supposed to do. Next up, we had Xavier Woods versus Cedric Alexander. And Xavier Woods, he's just a master of ceremony. Just getting in a ring, uh, going, recapping the feud with Hurt Business and the two-thirds of the New Day. And it's just, it really sucks that there's not more tag teams on Raw so both of these teams can feud with different people. They're really good, but WWE just, just really just running this into the ground. You take a good thing, you just run. It, 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 here's a good thing. Here's a ground. You're just running it into the ground. But anywho, Cedric Alexander was very aggressive. Really, before the match even started, jumped on jumped on Xavier Woods. The bell of Fisher reigns is good back and forth. Every time Xavier Woods trying to mount up some offense, Cedric just shuts him down. Uh, finally, Cedric towards the, towards the tail end of the match, uh, Xavier Woods is finally starting to mount some offense and then boom! Lumbar check shuts that all down. Pins Xavier Woods, one, two, three, clean as a whistle. Now, the interesting thing about this, and I noticed this last I noticed this last week, when it was a new day versus Cedric and Shelton, Shelton took the loss. Cedric was looking at him really pissed off. And I just thought, okay, well, you know, he's pissed off. They lost their championship match. They're really pissed off. But this week, Cedric takes off, runs up the ramp, celebrates by himself, while MVP and Shelton Benjamin are just in the ring looking like, What's going on, man? So maybe we're seeing a little teases of dissension with the Hurt Business. I personally think it's a little bit too early to break this faction up. But if this leads to Cedric going on to doing bigger and, and better things, 
I'm all down for it. Even though I really do like the direction and what the Hurt Business is doing, I don't think we should break them up. But, you know, I'm willing to let things play out and see where it goes. But the New Day versus the Hurt Business, WWE, just, 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 just grinding it to the ground. You're just, you're just grinding it to the ground. But overall, this was a good match. Even though it's a very dominant performance by um, Cedric Alexander, I'm all here for it. This segment is a hit. Now, I'm more of a traditional wrestling fan. I am totally down for the champion headlining the show. But in this instance, I think the match order was completely out of arrangement. I think Keith versus Riddle versus AJ Styles should have definitely been the main event of the night. But that's just me. This is definitely, without, without shadow of a doubt, match of the night. A uh, match you should go out of your way to go see. I mean, if you've never seen Keith Lee versus Matt Riddle, do yourself a favor, stop this video, go on YouTube and just type in Keith Lee versus Matt Riddle from, from any of their classic battles to all the promotions they've been through. It's really good stuff. You throw the phenomenal AJ Styles in there and you got the mixing of a really good match. There's a lot of back and forth, a lot of reversals. At one point you had Keith Lee using Matt Riddle literally as a batter ram and, and hitting AJ Styles. You had a lot of reversals of the moves. You had a lot of moves just come from out of nowhere. A lot of big dives and all that. But at the end of the day, Keith Lee and Matt Riddle were going back and forth and then boom, literally out of nowhere, phenomenal forearm from AJ Styles to pin Riddle for the one, two, three. Like I said, go out of your way to see this. I definitely didn't go over all the spots because I keep emphasizing, go out of your way to see this. It was a really good match. And we got a fresh matchup of AJ Styles versus Drew McIntyre. You know, I was convinced that somewhere, somehow, Randy Orton was going to come in there, hit an RKO out of nowhere, and we were going to see Drew McIntyre <laughs> versus Randy Orton again. I'm laughing, but really in time, I'm crying. Please don't do that for a while again, WWE. But this, man, it was a really good match. What more can I say about it? Match of the night, this was a hit. We had a Mia Yim, sorry, we had a reckoning uh, promo earlier in the day, and she was flanked by Mustafa Ali and... You know, a couple of weeks ago, Reckoning had taken out Dana Brooks, so it justifies why, why they're in the match now. And, you know, as soon as the match starts up, not even five minutes into it, uh, Reckoning's mask falls off. So when her mask falls off, she just officially back to me again. So this is me again versus Dana Brooke. Um, this is a very basic match. Ali tries to cause a, a distraction. But then Dana Brooke um, catches Mia Yim with the most devastating move in all of pro wrestling. Shout out to Simon Miller, the, the surprise roll up, and she wins. And like I said earlier, I mean, us as the fans, what are we supposed to think of Retribution? I mean, seriously, like, what do you... I gave it time, I tried to let things play out, but, like, really, you're just, you're just taking the thing that was good, here's the ground. You're taking it once again, just running it right into the ground. I would, what am I supposed to do with this, man? This, this same it was a total miss. Even with the distraction. Even with the mask coming off. Come on, guys. I mean, just give these girls something better. It's a myth. It, it, I'm not even going to harp on about it. I'm not going to go off on a tangent. Metribution is just is just completely math in my eyes. Your, your official name is Metribution. This segment was a total miss. You know, I can't lie. This is another segment. I just... I tried to just sit there and watch it with a straight face. When wrestling humor is done right, it's really done right. Uh, this is a follow-up from last week. Matt Rilla had approached MVP and was just like, hey, man, I got these cool business ideas. Like you're really big in the business. Maybe you might want to finance some of these. We want to hear some of these ideas. MVP said, hey, man, in two weeks, come back. If I like your business, we can do business. If I don't, then we're going to do business. Well, this is a week later, and Matt Riddle had some food ideas. He had some gardening ideas because he likes plants, because he smokes weed. And WWE just can't ever miss the opportunity to throw that in there. But I have to admit, it was actually kind of funny. It was actually maybe you know, probably just, just a little bit. But ah, MVP wasn't trying to hear none of that. He mushed Matt Riddle on his face. And Riddle... Obviously got right back in MVP's face and then boom, Hurt Lock out of nowhere. So I'm guessing we're setting up Bobby Lashley versus Riddle. I don't really have an issue with it, but it's just like, ah, oh, man, Riddle was just going after the WWE title and now he's going after the US title. I don't really mind it because I'm all here for Bobby Lashley versus Riddle. I really think WWE should really double down on the fact that both of these guys have legit MMA experience. The fact that 
you know, in a, in a, sh in a shoot fight, Matt Riddle and Bobby Lashley would beat half of your main roster up in NXT. I think they should really double down on that. But we're going to get Lashley versus Riddle, presumably at TLZ. And hey, I'm here for it. So this segment was a hit, bro. Next up, we had the Miz and John Morrison backstage, and they were offering AJ Styles some pie, some peach pie, because he's a, he's from Atlanta. And they had this back and forth thing about about what kind of pie it was. But really, the just of the, the gist of this was AJ Styles was just like, yeah, well, I'll help you cash in because it'll be sure as hell a lot easier to beat you than it is to beat Drew McIntyre. And I love how John Morrison immediately agreed with that. And the Miz was just like, yeah, yeah. Uh, this was funny. I tried to laugh, but I can't lie. It popped me. It was it's stupid wrestling humor. And when, when wrestling humor is done right, it's really funny. So this segment was actually a hit. And for the main event segment, we had Drew McIntyre and Sheamus versus The Miz and John Morrison. Before the match got started, Charlie Caruso was interviewing our WWE champion in a ring, and he said a direct message to Roman Reigns. Hey, you may have won the battle, but the war isn't over. And WWE, please, please, let it simmer down, let it simmer down. But sometime during, sometime on the road to WrestleMania, hell, maybe even at WrestleMania, the fans, I'm speaking on behalf of all the fans, we want to see Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns one more time. Maybe not even one more time, but you know, we want to see these two go at it again. He was talking about uh, how, how he's going to be facing AJ Styles soon. I'm all down for fresh matchup as aforementioned. So the match gets started and I love the fact, I love the pleasure, the, the look of pleasure that Drew McIntyre and Sheamus just have on their face as they're just beating the piss out of The Miz and John Morrison just tearing them up from pillar to post. And while Sheamus is in there doing his thing, Drew McIntyre blind tags him. You can clearly see that Sheamus really didn't like that. Whatever, there's back and forth, there's back and forth, and you know, these guys are, are going for it. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, yeah, I'm fast forward in the match. This is, you know, it's an okay match, but what I just basically told you is the gist in the entire match. Fast forward to the end, AJ Styles, out of nowhere, Randy Orton style, boom, second time tonight. Phenomenal forearm to cause a DQ finish. And then AJ Styles is yelling at Miz like, dude, I did what you asked. I helped you. Cash it in. And the Miz is just like, well, I'm not going to cash it in because you told me to. I'm going to cash it in because I want to. And all that time in between there, Drew McIntyre, being a super WWE champion is, gets his hit points back up to 100. Clay Moore's the Miz out of his boots. <laughs> so no, he did not cash in his money in a bank. And if you've ever seen Dave Chappelle impersonating uh, P. Diddy on a Chappelle show, I highly recommend you go look on that on YouTube because in classic form, uh, AJ Styles is just yelling, is yelling, rolls out of the ring, right into Almost's arms, uh, Almost, that, that's the name of his huge security guard, and he's just in his arms, just yelling and ranting and raving, and it is hilarious. When wrestling humor is done right, it's really good. I see some people complaining online, oh, that makes AJ Styles look weak. Shut your ass. Shut your ass, you ass hat. It's hilarious. AJ Styles looks hilarious. It doesn't take away from his wrestling skill. It doesn't make him look weaker. It just makes him funnier. It makes him being a dick of a heel because guess what? AJ Styles is a dick of a heel. And you know, he's he's hitting that point where his heel run is just as good as his babyface run. And WWE very much positioned him as like the quintessential babyface. So that is the mark of a great wrestler. Overall, the segments that hit on Raw were really good. And the segments that were bad, they were just bad. But I do think that the good outweighed the bad on this week's Raw. So overall, this week's Raw was a hit. I'm not even gonna say anything about the misses. I said what I said in my review of them. But yeah, overall, this role is a hit. With that being said, I am Mr. Richie Moon. You can find me at Mr. Richie Moon on all platforms. The Richie Moon Show on all platforms, wherever you listen to your podcast at. And once again, like, share, and subscribe to True Heel Heat Wrestling for the latest and greatest in wrestling news. And 
I know we're talking about WWE, but if you see Wednesday Night Dynamite, oh, I have a video essay cooking up for that. And we're going to see a big collaboration between AEW and Impact. Listen, another video for another time. With that being said, please like, share, and subscribe. This was Richie's Raw Review. Hit or miss. Raw was a hit this week, and I shall catch you next week. Peace.